Okay, some more back garden anatomy during lockdown and um, we're going back inside uh, the skull to look at the brain and we're going to talk about Broca's area. <clears throat> Broca's area is something that I don't I don't like teach a formal session on but it's something that comes up in conversation with students regularly. It's really important clinically and it's got a whole bunch of really interesting anatomical aspects to it um, but it often means that students know more about it than I do so this is an opportunity for me to pull together my thoughts and ideas and do a bit of research into something hopefully fairly concise to explain what Broca's area is, where it is, what it does, kind of what it links to and of course what happens if it gets injured. So Broca's area, Broca, Broca, he was a French he was a French fella, um, <clears throat> is absolutely crucial for me, it's crucial for everybody, but it's, it's crucial for me to be able to do my work, to do what I'm doing now. Um, so it, it, it's a part of the brain that um, is involved in language, in producing language, it's a part of the brain involved in producing speech. And it's a motor centre, um, it's associated with the muscles of the face, of the lips, of the tongue, of the larynx and that sort of thing. So it modulates the movements of those things to help produce speech. But being the brain, it's a bit more complicated than that. Not just in producing speech mechanically, but in the synthesis of language comprehension of language into speech, into these complex organised sentences that I'm producing and putting all these words in specific orders to make them mean something. If I put them in a different order they would mean something else. And if I stripped out a lot of the words in the middle and just left in the main words you might get a sense of what I was saying but it wouldn't be the same, right? So Broca's area is an area of the brain, so it's part of the grey matter, it's on the outer parts of the cortex. The grey matter is on the outside, white matter runs in, so the grey matter is neuronal cell bodies, right? So I think I've given you a little clue. Where is Broca's area? Well, Broca's area is in the frontal lobe, so the frontal lobe is responsible, it has most of the motor centres, most of the motor regions are in the frontal lobe of the brain, and is very close to, as I said, the regions of the brain that, that, send, that control the muscles of the face, lips, tongue, larynx and that sort of thing. So it's next to that, that premotor and motor cortex regions of the frontal lobe. It's near the primary motor cortex. But the thing that really gets me about Broca's area is it's on the left side. Whenever we talk about most parts of the body, we're symmetrical. We see the heart and the thorax, there's some asymmetry there. But Broca's area is this, it's, it's a real indicator of how the brain is asymmetrical. So Broca's area is on the left, which means that when we're thinking clinically, we have to think a little bit differently. So it's on the left side of the frontal cortex for almost everybody. For some people, it's on the right side. This seems to be a developmental thing. Um, and it's in what gets called the, um, the inferior frontal gyrus. And there are a couple of regions of the inferior frontal gyrus that get called the opercular and triangular regions. And Broca's area is within those two <laughs> lumps. So, right, whenever you're trying to describe and define the parts of the brain, it's difficult because everybody's a little bit different and the shapes are a little bit different. Um, you'll also hear about Brodmann's areas. So anatomists love to um, identify and name things, right? So Brodmann attempted to identify the regions of grey matter of the cerebral hemispheres by describing and numbering them. So Brodmann areas 44 and 45 also correspond to Broca's area. So um, if you look at different people, I think you'll find that Broca's area, you know, it's a little bit variable. It's not, it's not indistinct, but it's a bit indistinct. You can't, it's not like a muscle. You can say that is that muscle. It's, it's an area around here that's involved in these functions. And if it gets damaged, these functions get lost. So Broca's area 
links to other regions of the brain, um, as do most regions of the brain. Um, the most important link is with the Wernicke's area, which is also on the left side in most people, um, and it's in the temporal lobe, and it's associated with um, auditory information going into the brain. We may talk about that in the future in more detail. The Wernicke's area is involved in understanding language. So that makes sense, right? Um, an area of the brain that's involved in understanding language is linked to an area of the brain that's involved in producing language in the form of speech. And actually, if you look in more detail beyond speech, I think people who uh, use sign language, if their Broca's area is damaged, then it can affect their sign language. The brain is a complicated thing, right? Um, okay, here's an important thing um, which is an important concept to get to grips with. Um, while Broca's area is tied in to the muscles that produce speech, it's not wholly responsible for the muscles that produce speech, right? The muscle, those muscles are um, controlled by neurons from the main motor regions um, of the frontal cortex, and Broca's area can modulate that activity to control speech. Do you see what I mean? Which means that if Broca's area is damaged, we're going to come on to that in a moment, you can still move all of these muscles. You just lose another function, right? Okay, so how might someone damage uh, the Broca's area of their frontal lobe? Well, um, a direct penetrating injury would be unlikely, but would do it. Um, a tumour would also do it, wouldn't it? But um, the main reason <coughs> Broca's area comes up when I'm talking to medical students is because of stroke. So the internal carotid artery supplies blood to the brain and the left internal carotid artery becomes the left middle cerebral artery and that left middle cerebral artery supplies blood to many regions of the brain but including Broca's area. So an occlusion of the left middle cerebral artery and that side's important right so injury to the left frontal lobe or occlusion um, of the blood supply to the left side of the brain the left side of the frontal lobe the left side the left Broca's area could cause ischemic damage to neurons of Broca's area but on the right if an occlusion occurs in the right middle cerebral artery it won't because Broca's area is on the left. So with a, um, a left middle cerebral artery stroke, we of course remember that the, the left side of the brain controls muscles on the right side and so on. So we would see um, loss of um, muscle tone on the right side of the face and the right side of the body, but we would see injury to uh, Broca's area on the left. Does that make sense? Got to keep that in mind. Okay, so what happens if Broca's area is damaged then? There would be a loss in the normal ability to produce speech or to produce normal speech with the normal use of language. Um, but of course, assuming Wernicke's area is okay, the person would be able to understand language we would be able to understand other people just fine but would struggle to communicate themselves by talking and that's an important distinction so a loss of uh, an ability to use language normally because of damage to the brain gets called an aphasia and Broca's aphasia then is a particular type of um, language ability loss caused by damage to Broca's area and um, what you are like you, you'll see as usual there's a range of um, severities but a person would lose the ability to form complete normal sentences linking vo verbs and nouns together in a fluent way to describe something but they might still be able to get meaning across because remember they still understand language they just struggle to get meaning across and they would struggle to find words and hunt for words meaning that when they're trying to describe something instead of um, getting their meaning across easily they're likely to put out a faltering hesitating speech with the main the main words in there so instead of whereas you would take for granted if you wanted a cup of coffee you'd say 
please could I have a cup of coffee? If someone with Broca's aphasia would be able to get the meaning of what they wanted across, coffee, but would be unable to put that sentence together. Um, most interestingly, it's not just uh, spoken language, they would also find it difficult to write um, a full sentence. They'd, they'd struggle to use language in writing as well. This is the brain for you. Um, and um, or they might be limited to just repeating the same phrase okay over and over again okay 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 when prompted with a question or a different phrase like um, um, Broca's original patient Tan um, he, he got nicknamed Tan because he had a tumor in this region and could only produce the word Tan 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 but understood um, the question that he was being asked but couldn't articulate a response. Broca's aphasia. Broca's patient's name was Le Bon. Um, so, um, someone with Broca's aphasia will be able to understand language, but may produce um, agrammatical, non-fluent, effortful speech, but with meaning. Okay, so that's the crux of it. Um, and that's it. Um, so, that's what Broca's area is. That's where it is, that's what it does, and those are the signs you're likely to see if it becomes damaged. Um, it, it's pretty fascinating, isn't it? That it's just one-sided, and it's, but it, and it's kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's, um, it's like language itself. It's, it's, it's not involved, you don't have just one region of the brain that does language, you have a region or bits of the brain that pull in information and help you understand language and comprehend it and then there's another region of the brain where you you produce it and you write the brain it's fascinating and of course neuroscience is 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 the current frontier of biology um, so we're learning much more about this as time goes on oh good time it's just started raining <laughs> right see you next week